fourth movie in February. They officially have enough movies in February to do the February at the Movies review. I'm doing things a little differently this month. And I'm separating out this video for film number four of February. Marvel's big February winter return. Ant-Man and the Wasp in Quantumania, brother! Sorry, I had to do it. Um, well, Scott Lang, Hope Van Dyle, Janet Van Dyle, Cassie Lang, and Dr. Henry Pym are all back for another go-around. Only Cassie has been recast. And... They just... And, um... Scott decides that little Cassie has been working with her grandfather and grandmother on a, on a little device that takes them into the quantum realm for reasons that I can no longer remember, although my movie viewing was about five hours old. Well, they travel to the quantum realm, and the quantum realm's denizens are extras from the original Star Wars trilogy. The good Star Wars trilogy. They are surrounded by, again I say, extras from Star Wars circa the late 70s, early 80s. And what's more... The rest of the quantum realm is built of, you can see Cloud City, you can see Moss Eisley, practically. Yeah. Well, Scott Lang and company are now in what they call the quantum realm. What are they going to do when the quantum realm's denizens run wild on them. Okay. Well, the Quantum Realm's denizens are not all that bad. They're, in fact, they're freedom fighters. They're trying to liberate themselves from one villain who is very well cast, plays his role very well and very straight-laced, and uh, a secondary villain who is just played up is so campy and just just so awful that you that it's everything you can do to not roll in the aisles and in laughter when he shows up watch this movie for yourself and you'll know which villain is which There was the Star Wars tie-in. Now there's another tie-in that I'd like to discuss. The lead villain, the big bad, the villain that was well acted and well cast. He has surrounded himself with robot guards who look like extras from the Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella, Canon Films, Masters of the Universe film. And then he uses a giant computer animated hologram of himself to yell down at the denizens of the quantum realm that he is still very much in charge here. Circa Frank Langella's Skeletor doing the exact same thing to the Eternians. You've got to be a Marvel fan to appreciate this. You have to be a fan of cheesy 80s 
70s sci-fi or any any science fiction freedom fighter flick and even then you have to understand just how campy this thing is it's it's not the film for polished and posh film reviewers. It's exactly the film that the audience score just loves. Here I am. Audience. Audience. Some things are just popcorn sci science fiction superhero flicks. Sometimes you need those. This is not this is not Mr. Rudd goes to the Oscars. Now where do we stand on the popcorn buckets? Solid four popcorn buckets out of five. This is the movie that's this is a movie that's meant to entertain, and it does just that. And I didn't even like the first two Ant-Man movies. I, um... I have a pretty poor track record with the solo Marvel movies that are not Spider-Man nor Iron Man. Every other solo movie that Marvel has tried, I have only liked maybe one film out of them, if not two, if they made three about the other heroes. But, Ant-Man and the Wasp in, I'll go ahead and say it straight, Ant-Man and Wasp in Quantumania, I'll give it four out of five popcorn buckets for February. And if you've been keeping up with these, that's the best score. I just tipped my hand to I just tipped my hand to what is going to happen with the rankings when I eventually break this down one more time at the end of the month and do the ranking reviews. Kent Brindley, author Vintage animation, action figure, music nerd, unpaid movie critic. South Haven Ram, Grand Valley State Laker. Single guy. Man of many hats. I'll see you soon. Thanks again for joining me today.